What is up, guys? Today, I have a very special video for you. We're going to be looking at adventuring on the Creator Experience server, which allows us to go into Memory of Chaos, test them out, and do things that we weren't able to do during the story playthrough. So this is some new footage for you guys. I have a lot of things to say about it, but I'm going to let you guys see that in a minute. Real quick, disclaimers for the Creator Experience server. Just some good news. This one, you can actually react to. You can repost it with permission from the creator. It's actually totally fine for you guys to do that. The watermark has to stay on because they still have to make sure that the footage is not being basically shared around which is you know company's gonna do company things i'm not gonna question it but uh, the good news is yeah you guys can watch this you guys can react to it personally i don't care if you guys react to things that i post at all because you know what i feel like you, know, you should be able to watch what you want to watch and watch it with your viewers or just give your opinion on the thing that's totally fine but this is early access so that doesn't mean some things are subject to change it is important to know that things may be slightly different when adventuring actually comes out keep in mind guys these are my first impressions on the character i played him for a couple hours i wanted to get a feel for him but this is like my very beginning thoughts these are not going to be the same thoughts probably as my guide video which is going to have like a lot more detail be based entirely in like theory crafting and testing so just keep in mind if i say anything that you're like oh, oh man, man i, I hate this guy, guy and want to burn his house down. down it's probably going to be okay this is not going to be the end all be all for for me here it's not going to be as, as maxed out as perfect build or anything just first impression but either way i think he's going to be really really good so let's just hop right into it yeah all right so adventure is our new preservation boyo and he's uh, he's he's pretty sick man i actually like to call him japard premium japard's core functionality is to basically just be able to apply big shields to your entire team with his ultimate super nice utility to have it basically is giving you more effective hp for having him in the team this can be better than healing sometimes because healing is good for battles of attrition the battles that might go long but when you get to end game a lot of end game is you getting one shot or put on life support in one hit and shields prevent you from getting to that point in the first place the preservation units are very good for end game specifically if you want to run around the overworld and not heal for a while then bringing an abundance character is nice because then you don't have to go back to the uh the teleports or anything but the reason that i call adventuring japard premium is because adventuring basically does what japard does but much better because he can do it on his skill and on follow-up attack which is very easy to trigger so let me show you what i'm talking about i'm playing on this free-to-play craftable light cone destiny threads for woven basically this just gives damage dealt for having defense and it gives you effect res now this light cone in my opinion is not even super good for adventure rate. i mean yeah bonus damage is, is nice or whatever right but you're not getting a defense bonus and it is the craftable one so there is a gotcha one that's going to be a little bit better that's going to be concept for two this one gives defense and also gives damage bonus for every character on the shield that has a shield. This is probably going to be his best four-star option, but I'm using the free-to-play one just for comparisons. Right now, before we go into testing, I'm just going to show you guys this build real quick. I have crit damage, defense, imaginary damage, defense. So two defense pieces. Let's see how strong those shields are. I think you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised. So boom, right off the bat, you can see that we have some pretty strong shields on us. In fact, if we go look at this, we have 1402 for our shield. That is a lot of extra effective HP. And that's just for entering battle. Uh, there's actually a trait that he has that makes it so when you enter battle regardless of whether or not you use this technique you actually are getting this shield which is super nice but as it turns out the shield isn't all and it, let me show you what i'm talking about when you use his skill he applies the shield to your team and his skill shield can actually stack basically twice watch this Boom, everyone gets more shield now. Now, if we look at our shield, 2337. So everyone on our team now has 2337 shield based off of one skill usage and entering battle with adventure. That's like a shit ton of shield. That is a really good shield. And at the low cost of a skill point, as opposed to waiting a couple turns to try to get your ultimate up with Japard in a panic, when enemies are constantly slapping you and then they all target one character that's not Japard because why would they target a preservation and then that character is dead. So yeah, none of these characters are taking damage anytime soon. You you don't have to worry about that at all. So let me go over what Aventurine actually does with you guys real quick. Basically, Aventurine has these stacks, as you can see in the bottom left. Aventurine sort of double dips into sort of DPS classes where he has this really powerful shield, but he also can dish out a little bit of extra damage that helps clean up fights. Now, honestly, you don't even have to use him for that. You could just make him a shield bot and he would still be one of the best sustainers in the entire game so far based on my, my testing that I've done over the past couple hours. But the fact that he does it is a very nice thing for hunt characters because hunt characters are single target damage dealers and if you have tiny enemies that have a little bit less HP, if adventuring can be the one to take care of those, then your hunt characters can focus down the main boss while this guy takes care of the ads slowly but surely. So what adventuring basically does is with these seven stacks that he can get here, he can actually hold up to 10 stacks, but it activates on seven. He activates a follow-up attack that hits seven times randomly, single target damage. It can hit any enemy. It's just seven random hits. And the random hits are decent damage. They're not insane. And I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. The damage that adventuring is doing 
is not so crazy that it's going to drastically alter the amount of DPS output your team has. It's going to be more than other preservation, other abundance characters, but it's not going to be game breaking. The value of adventuring, in my opinion, is not the extra damage to the boss. Like I said, it's the damage that you're going to deal to all of the ads. So how do you get stacks for adventuring? Well, basically, anytime a character on your team gets hit, he gets a stack, but also anytime he gets hit, he gets a stack. So if he gets hit, you actually gain two stacks when he has a shield up. And if your allies get hit, he also gains one. He also has a trace that makes it so when your allies hit a follow-up attack, he gains another stack that only works three times between every use of his follow-up attack. But you'll see this here when I go ahead and use Topaz's ultimate here. I'm actually going to ignore Ruan Mei's stuff just because I don't want to insta-kill everything, but I'm going to go ahead and attack this dog, right? Boom, we do that. We get an extra stack from Topaz's follow-up attack, which is our basic attack, and from Numbi, which is going to be another follow-up attack. Topaz is one of the best partners for Adventure Aid, which is really funny. Government workers working together. And now, if only they could solve uh, society's problems. But these enemies are going to attack us next. He's going to get stacks. And when he gets to seven stacks, he's going to dish out some damage. He's at eight now. He's going to use seven of them, have one left over. Does 10k to everyone. Nothing crazy, but keep in mind, we don't have Ruan May buff up. And we're using a free-to-play light cone. He's gaining stacks rapidly. He's already back at four stacks, which is pretty crazy. And we'll go ahead and use Ruan May buff this time around so you guys can see what sort of damage he's able to actually do. Surely this won't one-shot him, right? Okay, yeah, we're fine. So now he's going to drop all the coins. He did 16k, nothing super crazy, right? As you can tell, the damage is not so significant that it's going to be game-breaking. But here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and use his skill again. Stack up shields even more. Because, remember, one of the best things about Aventurine is that it can stack up shields. If you're curious how much, he can stack up basically 24% of his defense plus 320 at down level 10. And then the shield effect can basically stack to be about 200% of the original power. So this is double what he was going to have before. Let's go and use his ultimate. His ultimate is single target. And it's going to give him anywhere between 1 and 7 stacks. Let's see if we get lucky. We are gamba -ing. And it looks like we gained three stacks, did 10k damage to him. But the one thing that is consistent across the board is, well, first off, that guy's going to take a lot of damage to himself, get 10 stacks, 20k damage, and then the follow-up attack from Topaz. Uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't anything crazy, but the one thing that's consistent is that these guys are shielded and they don't have to worry about anything. Now, you might not think this is much because this is an MOC. I'm basically just showing you what he does, but I will show you MOC in a bit. There's only a couple more things we have to talk about before I can show you. Basically, his talent is one of the best talents for a supporting character, in my opinion. Whenever a character has Fortified Wager, which is his shield, by the way, if you guys are wondering, they gain 50% effect resistance at, at talent level 10. It does take level 10. 50% effect resistance is crazy, by the way. If you guys were wondering how much that is, you are going to not be CC'd very often. It's a very, very strong buff. There's another couple things I want to talk about. I don't remember if I mentioned this already, so if I did, uh, forgive me. But whenever he launches his follow-up attack, his seven stacks, or consumes the seven stacks, he gives another stack of shield. Now, the shield is not actually as strong as the initial one. Provides all allies with a fortified wager that can block damage equal to 7% of his defense plus 96. If you're wondering, his skill is 24 plus 320. So it's not an insane amount, but because it can stack to be up to 200% of the original shield strength whenever you cast a skill, it does just add more shield. Now, you might be wondering, Brex, well, you've said all these awesome things about him and you've shown us his damage. It doesn't actually look that good. Is that because he's split scaling? The answer is no. He's not actually split scaling at all because all of his damage scales off of defense. But then if you look at his talents and his traces, basically once he has 4,000 defense, he gets a crit rate buff of 48%. So by default, this guy can have 53 crit rate just for you having enough defense on the character, which means that he's probably going to be critting about half the time by default without any crit rate substats at all. Getting to 4,000 defense while having a DPS focused build is a little bit tougher and his damage is going to be reduced a fair bit. However, those shields are juicy and he doesn't have split scaling, which is super nice. And the very last thing that I wanted to quickly tell you guys about is his ultimate. I already went over that it does a little bit of damage and it rolls one to seven points of, or one to seven stacks for him. The other thing it does is it actually debuffs an enemy and increases crit damage dealt to that enemy specifically. This dog that we hit earlier has unnerved on them, increases crit damage by allies to this unit by 15%. It's not game breaking, but it is a crit buff and we will take those. Before I show you guys what he can do with a uh, high investment and free to play investment damage wise, let me just show you sort of shield strength with a free-to-play light cone based on different relic setups. Right now, I have crit damage, defense, imaginary damage, defense. Then we'll try defense, defense, imaginary damage, defense, and then full defense. Keep in mind, guys, there's different sets you can play, like the follow-up set if you want to. You can play something with imaginary damage. That's totally fine. Aventurine is going to be one of the more flexible characters, a character that you can build a ton of different ways and still get a lot of value out of. But all right, let's go to memory chaos and let's look at that shield strength. I'm not going to be activating his technique, which I haven't told you guys yet, but it basically increases his defense by a random amount because uh, we love Gamba here. We, we absolutely love it. I want to see shield strength without that extra defense buff just because it is 
really insane. As you can see, everyone gets shield right off the bat. We are at 1286. I'm gonna go ahead and pull him forward. And as you can see, we skill again. Very nice, very nice. Wow, very cool. And we are at 2144. This is pretty good. This is a free to play crafted light cone that doesn't even have defense buffs on it, right? So this is like your worst case scenario. You can get up to 2144 shield with a crit build. Now, with that said, we can get higher. If you drop the crit damage build, you drop a little bit of damage, you go defense instead. We can get up to, oh God, we're just short of getting an extra two crit rate. It's fine, it's fine. It is what it is. Let's just check out the shield and right off the bat 1449 let's see what happens when we go ahead and use this skill again free to play s5 light cone this is your worst case scenario three defense and imaginary damage and we're looking at 2415 2415 is pretty insane dude all right and now let's run four defense with the defense set with the free to play light cone we're over 4k defense so we do get the max crit rate bonus um our, our damage is probably not going to be fantastic but that's okay we're just checking out shield right now right off off the bat 1589 man holy use a skill and 2649 so yeah this is like two-thirds of his hp bar basically for most characters you're sitting over half dr ratio you almost have his entire hp bar covered bro is living his best life right now and that is the power of adventuring e0 free to play adventuring even without him doing damage he's such a solid shield support that you're probably not even going to have to worry about taking damage to begin with. It's going to be very rare that you actually are put into a position where you're low HP, like, okay, maybe like Swarm Disaster, right? But realistically, you get buffs there too, so it shouldn't even be that big of a deal. And lastly, just for fun, let's take his S1 Light Cone. Just for fun, a Light Cone at S1 with a crit damage, imaginary damage build, and he has 1591. So that's, I mean, that's your best free-to-play option versus uh, your best bait option, or I guess you could still get it to play if you want but there also is the gotcha light cones if you do happen to get the gotcha light cone s5 the new one that has a little baby sunday on it that one's also going to be his best four star option in total yeah 2652 with a signature with a crit damage and imaginary damage so we only have two defense stats there but this is the light cone i was talking about uh, increases wears defense by a certain amount this is s5 so it's gonna be 32 percent defense and increases damage done by the wearer based on how many shields you have on the field uh 3400 defense with only two defense pieces on so it's a pretty good option but all right I'm going to take you through an MOC run and you guys can decide for yourselves if you guys think he's a good sustainer or if he's worth building for you or not. Uh, my characters on this account are kind of not super built. Uh, my luck for my main account has indeed followed me over here. So my relic rolls are not the best, uh, but let's get it. All right, right off the bat, Topaz, basic attack this thing, get a follow-up stack, get two follow-up stacks, use Topaz as ultimate. And we're pretty well shielded. We don't really have to worry about a ton of things getting crazy out of hand. Dr. Ratio takes a little bit of damage. Oh no. Oh no, Dr. Ratio took some damage. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's so bad. Oh no, wait, we're gonna get more shield on him. It's totally fine. He's totally safe. We don't have to worry about Dr. Ratio dying or anything because the shield from Aventurine's follow-up attack basically just gave Dr. Ratio the life support that he needed to recover from that 200 HP that he's missing. Oh, and also he's already back at five stacks again. That's because this guy was cleaving AOE. So he basically just gave us five stacks by hitting everyone. What a clown, Lamau. Let's go ahead and use our shields again. Stack them up even higher. Now we don't have to worry about anything. We really, oh dude, they are attacking these hunt characters like it's nobody's business. Gonna follow up attack. Do some pretty okay damage there. And again, because of these shields, we are chilling. We are absolutely chilling. Jeez. All right, so this guy's almost dead. I'm actually gonna let Aventurine finish this guy off. I'm not gonna worry about him at all. All right, to be safe, because I have the skill points, I'm gonna go ahead and use him. And then I'm gonna use his ultimate. This is gonna give us a 15% crit damage buff on this specific enemy, which is gonna be nice. And we get extra stacks, which are gonna allow us to uh, rain stuff down. And it looked like the dinosaur actually lived. So uh, that's unlucky, but it is what it is. And with Dr. Ratio, get the follow-up. Five out of seven stacks. It, the memory of Chaos Buff is just going to take him out. And we're low on skill points. So we'll just use a basic attack here. It's fine. Our shields last for three turns, and they refresh whenever we use our, uh, whenever we use our skill again. Dude, Dr. Ratio is just not in any danger at all. Oh, this is good. Bro made it rain. So I think the biggest downside for me about adventuring is I, I do think he could do a little bit more damage with, the, with a free to play setup. I don't think it would break the game to make him do a little bit more. But I understand why they did it. Because if you get his light cone, it does increase the amount of damage that he does by a, a fairly significant amount. But it is nice. Okay, Ruan Mace Shield is low. We're going to use our skill again. And we don't have to worry about getting CC'd or anything. This is so nice, man. It's just so cozy. How many stacks are we going to get? 
I don't know how many he got. But there you go. He's like, he's adding like an okay amount of damage. It's pretty okay. Again, rule on May's shield is low. And, and I just want to make sure that she's safe all the time. And we don't need the skill points. So uh, we are chilling. We're going to go ahead and use the skill again. Basic attacks, six stacks, seven stacks. Going to make it rain. 24k. 102k doctor ratio follow-up. Uh, memory blessing. Yeah, dude, this, this is crazy, man. As long as we crit this, uh, it's, it's hoey over for him. And there you go. And we cleared that before cycle 27. So that wasn't too bad. I think we could do better. But keep in mind, guys, that was, like I said, that was a free-to-play light cone setup. If you go look at our, our event droid right now, he's got Destiny's Threads for Woven. This is S5. And this isn't even his best four-star option. There's a better four-star option, Concert for Two. And better than that is his signature light cone, which I want to show you guys in action now so you can compare the damage. Will it save us a cycle? Probably not. Over a bunch of cycles, you might see 150k bonus damage from Aventurine. Like, he's mostly for cleaning up small mobs, but that damage does help a little bit. And just the shield utility, man, it's too good. It is too strong. I'm doing one of these. All right, here he goes. And 14k. I think something tells me we didn't really crit that. It is what it is. All right, Ruan May, HP getting a little low. No fear. Aventurine is here. 19k. Not bad. Not bad. Rule out this guy. We got another one. So there you go. So that was 60k plus 26k plus 18k. Like, it was a pretty good amount of damage. Your other sustainers can do some damage. I'm not going to ignore other sustainers, like, doing damage. Because obviously, like, even Fushuan does add a little bit of damage, right? But Aventurine is meant to be sort of like the premier damage adder, if that makes sense. This guy has a nerve, which means you take a bonus crit damage. We go... He's an adventuring seven stacks, baby. I think the most exciting part about his mechanics is that you can build him slow. Like I'm playing him really slow right now. He's at like 114 speed and he still is able to shield us just because of that follow-up mechanic being so crazy. All right, make it a rain, make it a rain. See, and he killed the odd. Now we didn't actually need him to kill the odd there, but that's like I said earlier, I feel like that's what he's best at because the damage he does isn't like super insane. Dr. Ratio's shield is just so absurd right now. Oh no, Ron May took a little bit of damage. Oh no. All right, now our shields are fine. I'm just gonna basic attack this guy, break him. Dude, they want Ron May so bad. They, they want her so bad. That's crazy. All right, now, if I want to be safe with Ron May, I use skill. Um, we don't need to, but uh, why not? Because look at that shield. Now, there's a lot of factors at play that, that play into basically when you clear. Like, this this one's actually around slower, but we're doing more damage with Aventuri. So, it doesn't actually make sense if it was a perfect comparison. But honestly, comparing things in Star Rail, uh, when there's so much RNG involved, is really, really tough. We just killed right after the cycle ended, even though, again, he was doing more damage. But as you can see, like, individual hits, Aventurian was hitting more, and the shields were bigger. That's, that's to be expected. It's a signature light cone. Um, what I will say, though, is you saw us use a completely free-to-play craftable light cone and just run everything over, and it wasn't a problem. Aventurian, even though he can add damage, uh, and, and I've said this a thousand times, even though he can add damage, it's not going to be game-breaking damage, but it is nice to have extra damage. And I think what I really like about Aventurian more than anything else that effect resistance he can share with your team and the fact that even with a free-to-play craftable light cone his shields are so unbelievably strong you just feel so safe and cozy now what i think aventurine really is good for is hunt character specifically obviously he was built for this team right like obviously this was a team specifically meant for him with topaz who's going to compliment him and give him a bunch of extra stacks and with dr ratio topaz is going to buff all the follow-up attackers rome is going to buff all of these guys like this is this is the team for adventuring, right? But it's not the only team you can be played in. You can be played in teams that aren't revolving around follow-ups at all. Specifically, I think with hunt characters, adventuring really excels. As I mentioned before, the damage that he does can take out adds. Uh, there wasn't a very good showcase of it there. Honestly, the adds are pretty strong and his damage isn't that significant. But over time, if there are adds just chilling on the field, they could be chipped away at, they could die pretty easy. And with Zila, for example, if they are minus 20% HP and then she can one-shot them, go straight into Resurgence, that's nice. 
nice. Maybe she could have one-shot them without the minus 20% HP. Who knows? But for characters that can only hit one target, he is good at cleaning up for that. And especially in simulated universe and like really high tier, like golden gears and stuff, when you get him really buffed, you get all the elation and follow-up buffs, he can be really good there. With Yenching, his biggest thing is he just needs to not take damage. Otherwise, bro just like dies, falls over, and it becomes a piece of wet paper. So Aventurine is good for that too. And also uh, Yen King follow-up attack. So like, you know, Topaz, where you at? So I think Aventurine is meant to be the hunt protector, the protector of hunt. But he also works in virtually any team as your sustainer. Versus Fushuan versus Japard. Well, Japard and him, I, I like I said, Aventurine is Japard premium. Aventurine can't freeze enemies though. So I guess if that's a thing that you're doing, if you're running like Dissociation Remembrance buff, you know, Japard's good for that, which is nice. And Japard, if he gets unlucky and gets one shot, he just gets back up because he is God's chosen princess. But Fushuan is a different story. So Fushuan is sort of a weird preservation character because like I said, she's pseudo abundance, pseudo harmony. She takes damage for other characters, but she doesn't have a shield. And you'll see this if you go play high level golden gears that Fushuan can absolutely like run over and stomp. That's why a lot of people play Japard and Fushuan or just Japard because a lot of times Fushuan can get like one shot in Swarm or not even Swarm in golden gear specifically. Not calling Fushuan bad. It's just that she's not a shielder, right? Aventurine is a shielder. She does prevent some of the damage your team takes and she does pseudo sustain. Aventurine just fully prevents your team from taking damage. It's not reducing the damage your team takes. It's like you basically take no damage. Like I think I took 200 damage on my Ruin May. And keep in mind, that's like doable for free to play players. And now in comparison to abundance characters, your Locha, your Bailu, your Hoho, you know, Hoho adds energy gain and attack buffs, which is super nice. And she's still going to be really good in a lot of teams. But if you compare them just to like abundance characters in general, abundance characters are good for battles of attrition where you're getting slowly chipped away at, but not one shot. Because if you get if you get one shot, if you have 4k HP and something does 4,100 damage, Locha can't protect you from that. Technically speaking, Bailu can because the damage reduction, but a shield is basically extra HP on top of your normal HP pool. So if you are getting one shot, Aventuring can prevent that. But considering how strong his shields are and how easy they are to put up, it's like you just never get, like even if they're doing chip damage, you're never going to run out of shield. So I almost feel like Aventuring just from playing him feels like you kind of don't really need any other sustainers because he just refreshes his shield so often. It just kind of feels like I, I feel like Abundance just got kind of kind of stomped on, at least for endgame content. I think for like Overworld and I think even for like Golden Gears and, and stuff that can be okay, just depending on what you run and like what you're doing but even then it's like golden gears you still need over hp right you need shield my first impressions of adventuring is that he's really good i was not expecting him to be this crazy i was expecting him to be like super strong but i didn't expect to go into moc 12 and just not take damage the entire time <laughs> yeah guys it, it might be over for abundance characters i don't know goodbye abundance you're, you're gone forever sorry she looks so sad about it i feel Look at him back. No, it's fine. This game's easy. You can pull for whoever you guys want, but I think he's pretty good. I, I, th I think he's a pretty solid character. It's one of those things where if you have Fushuan, I feel like you still can benefit from adventuring. And if you have Japard, you benefit from adventuring. Whereas if you had adventuring, you don't really benefit from Japard. And if you have adventuring, you do benefit from Fushuan in certain scenarios, but it's not like universal. I feel like this guy is universally good. I guess the only characters that he really has like, anti synergy with at the moment are like Jing Liu and Blade. Because like my wife needs to suck HP from her teammates which means that they're slowly losing HP over time. But honestly, if you kill fast enough, it doesn't even really matter because he has shield. So like they're not going to be in killing rage. It's only 4% HP per tag. <laughs> this guy wants to be low HP though. So I can understand why you wouldn't want to run those two together. But anyways, this video has gone on way too long. I think it's really good. Oh, also Acheron works with him because he can apply a debuff, but it's still not, it's still not like insane though. I'd rather run Gallagher. Honestly, if you're going to run anyone or you just zero cycle and run a bunch of the Harmony Nihility characters. Anyways, guys, I think he's really good. I I don't think uh, I don't know. I, I struggle to call characters must pulls. There's been so many must pull supports like from a utility standpoint. Insane utility standpoint. Insane utility standpoint. Insane. Insane. Uh, like even this one's standard character is still insane. Like there's too many characters that are like really good, but I do think he's pretty solid. If you miss him, though, there are enough characters in the game that are good at their job to where like it's OK. But I do think he's definitely a top dog for now. And uh, TLDR on the light cone, you don't need it. It's very good for improving his damage, but his damage that's being improved isn't like so significant that it's going to break the game for you. So with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed and look forward to my adventuring guide very soon. I'll go over his Eidolons in my guide video. To be honest, they're pretty good. But I mean, don't spend money on this game, guys. <laughs> like genuinely. Oh, and let me know if you're pulling on him because I think everyone just went all in for Acheron and, and we we might be broke, guys. It might be Jover. It might be Hoyover for us. <laughs>